Hey everybody, welcome back for another week of Bible Study Fellowship. We're going to be taking a look at uh, the book of Isaiah tonight, chapters 40 through 48. We're glad you're here. We'll get started right away after I pray. Father, thank you for the words that you have given to Isaiah, uh, the words that have been handed down for generations after generations, and thank you, Lord, for the words of comfort that you're speaking to your people and to us by extension uh, through your prophet Isaiah. Pray that you would reveal to us uh, the meaning of his words and help us understand how we can apply them to our lives. Amen. You know, I think most of the time in life when we are looking for something to do, we're trying to understand if a place is good or fun or enjoyable, we like firsthand knowledge. We want to go somewhere, we want to experience a great meal or have a great time, and then we're going to know, like, that place was awesome, uh, and we'll be able to tell somebody else about it because we were there, we experienced it, it was uh, a part of our history, uh, it's a part of our story, it's a part of something that we experienced, we had a great time, and so you can go and hopefully have the same experience as well. One of the things that we'll face a challenge for if we go to a new town or a different place or someplace we're not familiar to and we're trying to figure out, what am I supposed to do here? Uh, what are the, where, where is maybe if you, you know, move to a new city, uh, where's a good place to have a bank or where's a good place to go grocery shopping or where's a good restaurant to live in? Uh, one of the things you might do is ask other people or read reviews. And, uh, you know, the reality is, is that there's so much information in this world, so many things that we don't know, that we're forever having to rely upon other people to help us know something or learn something or realize something. Uh, you know, if we're trying to buy a new car, we're going to talk to the car dealer, we're going to look at a website. And again, this is all going to be information that we have to evaluate. Uh, if we're going to buy a new computer or buy some different software, we're going to read a review. We're going to ultimately have to evaluate, is the person that we're speaking to trustworthy? Should we listen to them? We don't have the knowledge ourselves. Uh, there's more in the world than we could possibly know. And so we're going to need help. We're going to need guidance. We're going to need information. But we've all come across people who have given bad advice. And so we have to con keep looking for uh, ways to understand, is the information that we are getting from somebody else good or is it bad? And I think that God understands the challenges that we face as people trying to navigate uh, this landscape of what voices should we listen to? How do we know the good voices and how do we discern those from the bad voices? And so as we come to the book of Isaiah tonight, chapters 40 to 48, uh, God is speaking to his people. Uh, that is the role of the prophets. The prophets are taking the words of God, writing them down, and sort of putting quotation marks around them and saying, thus saith the Lord. And we're into a section now where God is speaking to his people, but God also wants his people to know that his words are trustworthy. His words can be listened to. His words can provide a foundation for the way that we live and the way that we carry out our lives. And we don't need to wonder uh, if God's words are good or bad. And, and God's going to provide some background for his people to be able to make sure that, that they'll be able to truly trust and, and, and rely upon his words. So first of all, God is going to uh, speak to his people throughout 40 through 48, but God is going to reveal things about himself. Uh, in this first section, so that people will be more likely to listen, more likely to hear. God is going to reveal some truths about idols, again, so that people are more likely to listen, more likely to hear. God is going to also reveal some truths about the future. And, and, and ultimately, God wants his people to know that his promises and his words are trustworthy, they can be received and listened to with confidence. And as we look at this, we're going to see sort of two broad sections of our passage tonight. Uh, the first section is from 40 uh, to the end of the middle of 44, uh, chapter or chapter 40 from ugh, chapter 40 to 4423. I don't know why I had such a hard time with that. Uh, God is going to be talking to us about his character and his plan for his people. And then we're also going to see in the latter half from really from 44 to the end of the section 48, uh, God is going to be revealing more uh, about uh, the future that's coming and uh, letting his people know what will happen to them and that he is the one who is control 
of that future. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if we're going to look at chapter 40, hopefully I can say all these 40s and 41s correctly tonight. Uh, but first of all, what God is t- saying to his people in chapter 40 is to get ready because the glory of God is going to be revealed to the people uh, in a way that they have not experienced before. Uh, God is reminding the people of Israel that he is not like them. He doesn't grow weary. He doesn't get faint. His word stands forever. His his words do not fade. And that's very different from the kind of people that you and I are used to working with where uh, we do falter. We do get faint. The things that we say that we're going to do, we would love to do them, but we can't quite pull it off because we falter. As we go into chapter 41, God is going to remind the people of Israel and us by extension of some of the ways that he has moved through history to be able to care for his people. Uh, God has raised up nations. He talks about that uh, in chapter 41, verse 2, who stirred up one from the east whom victory meets at every step. He gives up nations before him. So God is going about these great national changes, uh, this, these nation, this rise of nations, rise of kings. God is doing this because he has a desire to deliver and to care for uh, the nation of Israel. We're also going to see in another section in verse 41, God reminds his people that he has removed their enemies. There have been times when Israel has gone out and looked and their enemies were gone because God contended on their behalf. God took care of the nation. Chapter 41 ends in verse 20 uh, with these words, that they may see and know, they may consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. The Holy One of Israel has created. Why is it that we should listen to God's words because he is working for his people. He is protecting his people. As we move into the latter part of uh, uh, chapter 41, there's this reminder that idols are futile. Uh, It had been a major problem in the land of Israel. They had been worshiping idols, foreign gods, other gods, uh, and, and they have no hold. Idols are worthless. Uh, Chapter 41, verse 29, Behold, idols are all a delusion. Their works are nothing. Their metal images are empty wind. And so the idols that the nation has been turning to, they're not worth listening to. They are bad voices. They can bring about no change, no benefit, no profit for the people. The person who can bring about benefit for the people is the Lord's chosen servant. The The first of four servant songs in the book of Isaiah is found in chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Uh, 42, verse 1, Behold my servant, whom I am uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him, and he will bring forth justice to the nations." We know that looking back on the book of Isaiah, that this promised servant is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of the characteristics that are that are spoken of about Jesus in those verses I just read, the Spirit of the Lord is upon him, he's bringing justice to the nations, and he will not grow faint until justice is established in God's world. One of the other actions of this servant is he will open the eyes of the blind and bring out the prisoners The servant of God is going to bring sight and freedom to those who follow God. And because of what the servant is going to do, God's people should be ready to sing a new song. He talks about this in the latter part of chapter 42, uh, verses 10 through 17. Uh, Chapter uh, 42, verse 10, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing his praise from the end of the earth, you who go down to the sea and all that fills it, the coastland and their inhabitants. Uh, All of the people are called to sing a new song to the Lord. God is going to do something unexpected. He is getting ready to act. Uh, God is going to guide his people. uh, That's mentioned in here. And ultimately, uh, God reminds us that he is going to be the one who turns darkness into light for the people of Israel. Again, that notion of bringing sight uh, to those who are blind, the idea of darkness and to light, God is getting ready to do something that will be undeniably amazing and visible to his people. 
another reason that God calls his people uh, to hear him and to listen to him uh, is found in Isaiah 43. God is present with his people during the hard seasons. Uh, 43 verse 2, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. God's people have had to navigate through some difficult situations, but God is present with his people during hardship. Uh, God reminds his people uh, that they are precious in his sight. Uh, He has not forgotten them. He will not cast them off. Fear not. I am with you. Uh, 43 verse 5. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. So God is going to be gathering his people together. He is going to be with them during the hard season. Uh, He has not forgotten his people. Uh, As we go on in the latter part of verse 40, uh, chapter 43 into 44, Uh, God reminds his people that he is not unaware of their sin. He is not unaware of their shortcomings. And he will be the one who will forgive the sin of his people. And God will also pour out his spirit uh, into the people in the same way that he poured it out into his son. There's another reminder about idolatry as we go into chapter 44, beginning in verse 9. All who fashion idols are nothing. And all the things that they delight in do not profit. Again, there is this, uh, these two voices you could listen to in the history of Israel, the voice of God and the voice of idols. And that voice of idols, God brings up again and again uh, that idols are made by men. Uh, in, in this section, he talks about the ironsmith and fashioning the metal and working, uh, working from the coals to, to craft the metal. Uh, and again, ironworking isn't a bad thing. Uh, But an idol is something that is made by human hands, and that is not who we're dealing with in the God of the Bible. Uh, Idols offer the people a false hope, but God's character, God's God's presence and plan for his people is a reason that God's words can be trusted. God's words can be trusted because of his character and his plan for his people. Many times you and I have plans. This past weekend, my family and a couple of friends uh, completed a challenge making boats. Our boats were supposed to float on uh, 27-gallon storage tubs that you would store things in your basement in. You could have three of them that you could use to build your boat, and you had to navigate your boat over a one-mile course. And each team had a plan. They had a design that they would hope allow their boat to float, to be navigable, and to finish the course. And as we set out, we began to realize there was a problem with our plan. Not everything that we did went according to plan. Uh, Things didn't maybe move as fast as we were hoping. Uh, It was more difficult than we thought. Uh, The flaws of our plans, the things that we were hoping in, weren't going to work. Uh, And and we have plans that fail. Uh, We have ideas and voices that we listen to that will lead us astray. Friends, that is not God. God's plans will stand uh, because of his character, because of the way he has acted for his people through history. Has there been something in your life or in your experience Uh, a plan that you've had, a person that you were hoping in, a situation that you hoped would resolve a certain way that has ultimately failed? Have you experienced uh, hardship disappointment uh, in some of the plans that you have had for your life? Friends, what would it look like for you and I to have greater confidence in the plans that God has for us? Uh, To believe truly that God is the one who is in control of history as it unfolds. Uh, To be confident that the hardships that we face, even though they're hard, God is present with us in those moments. To believe that God is bigger and more powerful than the challenges that we face. And to have the confidence to turn to him in those moments rather than turn to uh, other places that we would like to turn to for comfort uh, and, and satisfaction. Well, one of the other reasons that God uh, wants people to listen to his voice, to hear him, is because God understands what is going to happen. God has control of the future. 
uh, because he is the one who unfolds the events of the present and can bring about his plan in a way that nobody else can. As we move into uh, Isaiah 44, in the last part of 44 and into 45, God begins to speak about one who he will bring about who is called uh, the shepherd, God's shepherd, and his name is Cyrus. Now, we know from uh, uh, history that Cyrus would eventually become the king of the Persian Empire. Now, the Persian Empire at the time of Isaiah's writing didn't exist. At this point in history, the nation of Israel and Judah are still around, and the the mighty power in the world, the rising power, was the Assyrian Empire, who was going to eventually come in and take over the northern kingdom of Israel and eventually the southern kingdom uh, of Judah. Uh, 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 well, I'm sorry, the, the Assyrians were going to come into Israel, uh, and then the Babylonians would conquer the southern kingdom uh, of, of Judah. But uh, Cyrus would eventually be the one who would conquer Babylon. Uh, Cyrus would send God's people back to the land of Israel to rebuild the temple, to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. And God reminds his people, I know the one who who will be my shepherd to you. And it will be this foreign king by the name of Cyrus who will ultimately bring you back into the land. We see, uh, and as we go into in verses 46, uh, God has some words to speak to the nation of Babylon. He talks about Bel and Nebo, who were two gods of the nation of Babylon. Uh, and ultimately, God condemns uh, these two idols. Uh, Even though the nation of Babylon would carry off uh, the people of Judah, God is still in control. God is more powerful and greater than these idols. And ultimately, Bel and Nebo and the nations of Babylon will be powerless uh, to control what God is trying to unfold uh, because God is greater than the nation of Babylon. And we read in 47 of the humiliation of the nation And ultimately, in 48, uh, we read about God's uh, refining his people, bringing his people back from Babylon for his own sake. Uh, Chapter 48, verse 9, God says, For my name's sake, I defer my anger. For the sake of my praise, I restrain it for you, that you may not be cut off. And then also, similarly, in 48, 11, For my own sake, for my own sake, I do it. For how should my name be profaned? My glory I will not give to another. Uh, Friends, the the principle for this is that God knows the future. Uh, God knows the future, and for that reason, God's voice is a voice that we should listen to. Perhaps there have been times in your life when you've tried to figure out, uh, guess what's going to happen in the future. You've made an investment. uh, You've made a decision. You've made a commitment to enter into a profession only to see Uh, your plans crumble uh, because, again, as much as we might try to know what's going to happen in the future, we we just don't. We can't predict it. We can't operate the way that God does. Well, what difference does it make to you and I that God knows the future? Like, why is that important to us? Why should we care about God knowing the future? Why does God want his people to know um, that he is aware of the future? And I think that the reason is, is that God wants his people to have comfort today. This section started off with God speaking comfort to his people. Uh, Comfort, comfort uh, is the way that Isaiah 40 verse 1 brings. And how can we be comfortable if we have no idea what's going to happen to us? How can we be at peace? How can we be at ease if, if we feel that the world is out of control? that everything that's happening, that somehow we have to respond to it and be ready for it. Uh, Friends, there's no way that we can do that. There's no way that you and I can be ready for the circumstances and the challenges that are going to face us. And that's why God's voice, speaking through Isaiah, are truly words of comfort. God is saying, I'm in control. I know the future. My character, my presence, These are reasons that you can be confident in the words that I'm speaking to you if you would only listen. What would it look like for you and I to listen to the voice of God? We're not going to hear him in the same way that the people uh, in the nation of Israel did. There isn't a prophet that's going to come and speak to us. Uh, But the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that God is still speaking to his people through his word, through the Bible, 
and through his Holy Spirit. And so the question for you and I as we come to the book of Isaiah is, are we willing to listen? Are we willing to listen to God's words through this book uh, as we study it, as we think about it, and as we contemplate it? The people of Israel decided that they were going to harden their hearts. They were going to close their ears, they were going to close their eyes, and they weren't going to listen to the words that God had for them. What choice will you and I make as we study this book? Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I pray that as we look at the book of Isaiah, you would help us to keep our eyes and ears open so that we can hear from you. Pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.